it seems like it was just yesterday that the that the ADA was passed in some respects, um, and and it's hard to believe it's been 30 years that uh, that's gone by since the ADA was passed. Um, you know, uh, there have been a lot of changes. I think it's had a tremendous impact on the lives of people with disabilities. There's so much more that um, needs to be done, and so much more that could um, could be done as a result of the ADA. Denise Figueroa is the executive director of the Independent Living Center of the Hudson Valley. She was also on the National Council on Independent Living Board of Directors, or NICL, when the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed in 1990. The organization worked at the national, state, and local levels to boost support for the passage of the ADA. I think that one of the things that um, that sticks out in my mind is the, you know, how we were able to bring such a broad coalition of people together. It wasn't just Nickel, it wasn't just the independent living movement, uh, but the independent living movement provided a lot of the bodies for those marches and for the crawl up the, you know, up the Capitol steps. Um, and uh, for the marches on, on the White House. Um, it, but, but we also had a broad-based coalition of, of disability organizations, of parent groups, of uh, people with developmental disabilities, the National ARC and UCP National, and uh, just so many groups that got together and, and supported this effort. Um, and, uh, and we haven't seen that on, in, you know, on many, Bills. Denise says the Americans with Disabilities Act has had a tremendous impact on the lives of people with disabilities, but there is much more that needs to be done. Many restaurants, bars, and movie theaters are more accessible than ever before. Curb cuts are another easily identifiable result of the ADA. One of the big issues, though, where significant progress still needs to take place is in the realm of employment for people with disabilities. Some strides have been made, but the unemployment rate for people with disabilities is still at more than 60% in the United States. There's also another major issue that needs addressing. We are still struggling with the issue of institutionalization of people with disabilities. You know, there's um, the, the nursing home, the folks who end up in nursing homes unnecessarily because we don't have enough home care services. Um, because housing still needs to be more accessible and affordable. Um, one of the biggest issues is because we aren't working, a lot of people with disabilities can't afford to live in the community in, in fair market housing, and there's just not enough subsidized accessible housing. So they end up, particularly if they've had an accident or acquired a disability at a later age, um, their home may not be accessible and they get, they end up, landing in nursing homes um, and as a result um, they get stuck there you know and we so we still have this institutional bias in terms of the funding that's available to instead of getting people out of nursing homes and into the community and making that their first choice their right to be in the community um, it, we struggle you know we struggle to get them out the issue of institutionalization has taken center stage during COVID-19 because of the high rates of infection and death in places like nursing homes. It, it just highlights the fact that those settings are dangerous places to be, you know, that, that disease and, and viruses spread like wildfire in those places. And when you can't get out, when you don't have the options to get out, um, you're more in danger. Advocates are continuing to work to improve community living options for people with disabilities. Know your rights and responsibilities under the ADA. Connect with the Northeast ADA Center at northeastada.org.